Yeah, Mr. Smith, do you feel like we're um, sleepwalking to a catastrophe here? Certainly uh, anything but uh, the level of activity that's going on by the Selvers at the Incident Control Centre uh, out on the beaches, in my view, is the very best that we as a government could expect. But we certainly have been putting as much pressure as we can on the Selvers to get that focus on that oil recovery. Frankly, I will not be sleeping easy until every last drop of that heavy oil is off the rain. The, um, the pumping rate before the storm was 20 tonnes per hour. You've got five days to get that 20, what, 300 tonnes off. That's not quick enough. Well, at the moment, uh, without the booster pump, the um, only previously we're achieving you know, three or four tonne an hour. Uh, that is going to make it a very long exercise, and that is why, in my view, the success of the oil recovery operation depends very heavily on getting that booster pump to operate. Uh, effectively, uh, it has the capacity to be able to significantly increase the oil recovery rate. I will feel a lot easier if we're getting delivery of sort of 10 tonne per hour. Uh, I'm encouraged that the Silver team is going to be able to stay on board overnight with the weather conditions being good. Uh, but you are fair to say that we will remain very nervous until we start getting those sorts of rates. You were talking about a, a nervous waiting. Um, a lot of people here in the Bay, they're very frustrated that it takes so long. Can you understand their frustration? I can understand their frustration. Uh, look, I have had everything from propositions of putting every table tennis ball that we could find in New Zealand into the hull of the arena. I've had suggestions that we get all the hair clippings from every hair salon in New Zealand to try and decontaminate the oil throughout New Zealand. There is a frustration. It is the nature of the beast when you're dealing with a 40,000 tonne vessel that is severely damaged and being rammed at top speed into that reef, uh, that it is a complex job to get this very thick, difficult oil off that stricken vessel. And I am satisfied that every technical and economic resource is being thrown at that task so that we can prevent a further significant dump of oil. Bruce, can you tell us if there was any oil pumped off today, how much? I haven't got uh, figures on what volumes have been pumped off at the moment, but I'd like to just address the point raised here. It's not a simple matter of taking a hose from one tank and shoving it into, a, into another vessel. First of all, it's 160 metres that you're pumping across. You're pumping out of a, a tank, the width of this part here to the roof there, and you've got pumps in there, you've got this this treacle-like consistency of oil. You've got bad weather, you've got, um, so that little pump inside that tank is pumping that whole way up there. You'll recall that even in the first days of this um, incident, the salvage masters and experts were saying this was an incredibly complex uh, operation. So now what we've got is complexity heaped on top of complexity, heaped on top of complexity. So it's not a simple job. These guys are busting their asses trying to get this done. They aren't delaying anything at all. Every resource that they need, every resource that we need, has been made available. So it's not a resourcing issue, it is strictly the complexity of this operation. If, if they could think of something quicker to do, they'd be doing it. Have you been able to... I've got a question, so I'll just take this question. Is this for the yes. um, I've seen one boost to pump. Uh, blow out the circuits there, another one's been brought in. Uh, is it the case of fixing the other booster pump in case this one blows out, or how many booster pumps do they have? Um, absolutely, they will fix this, the one that they've, they've swapped out. That'll be there and they'll become the spare. Um, but that's the way they operate. They, they operate on contingencies and contingencies on contingencies, so they're, they're prepared for this. They don't just bring one of an item, they bring multiple. So there's only one, there's only one. Well, at the moment there is because they'll be fixing the new one. It's the, they'll blow the circuits out, that's another Christian's job. Christian, did you? So, the booster pumps can take out of action, but have you still been able to keep pumping without the booster pump there? Yes, they have been able to continue pumping while without the booster. And remember, that's the, I talked about it this morning, how they had made all those redundancies into the line so that they could just swap a piece of equipment out, put it back in, and so they can continue the pumping process. That's a bit. Sorry, two very quick questions. One, do you know how much oil was pumped in, in the in the time frame of starting this morning and now? Um, I haven't got those numbers. Uh, and the other one was, I understand the service a few days ago were looking at the possibility of the steam units. Is that something that's still considered? The, 
biggest challenge with um, bringing steam units on is the, the power that they require. So they have to, would have to put on more generators, which they're doing today, um, and much larger generators because they take quite a bit of um, effort to generate the steam. And then they have to clip into the ship's existing steam coils because the coils in the tank are at the top of the tank. And so it, it's really quite a hard job to do that. So that's another bit of complexity on top of it, that trying to do that. Sorry, just, just a quick question. I've just seen a couple of variations and um, that the fastest speed that it can go with the booster pump well, that has gone so far. Could you just clarify what, what the quickest speed it has gone so far with, with the booster pump before it? I, I'm not sure what the numbers have been quoted out of. Um, is it? Would it 10 guns an hour? 10 guns an hour? I have said. I have simply said that I will not sleep easy right. until we get sort of the 10 tonnes an hour range. But we don't know if it has gone. And I simply base yeah. that on the, that is simply a basis of if you've got 1,200 tonne of <laughs> we've got a, a look like a forecast of five clear days, you work it out. It's only 30 hours. The, the, the Archimedes pump is rated between zero and 87 tonnes an hour. So then that depends on the, the oil, the, the type of the oil, the distance you're pumping, and all of those variables. Remembering that the little wee Archimedes pump, little wee, that's quite a large one, but even this unit here, has to draw it from the bottom of the fuel tank right up to the sort of height of this building in a longer 160 metres. The head of that pump is quite quite hard, you know, so that's a really pushing that little pump. Putting the booster pump in means it reduces all the effort that the little pump down the bottom is. And these are big ones, big ones. The purpose of um, draining the water out of the engine room is that to get the engines going? No, that's to keep buoyancy into the engine room, um, and the, what's keeping the stern afloat is the buoyancy containment in that region. So if you put more water in, you're reducing that buoyancy. So there's no plan to get the engine going to try and heat the oil up? 20, what, 21 degrees, the oil in the bottom of the engines themselves, it means you can't operate those engines. Any, uh, any final questions from Bruce or any of the other specials? Yeah, I just want to ask about the um, starboard um, tank. How long will that um, take to um, put up the dams and before you've been able to properly assist that? So, um, at the moment they've got divers. You'll recall that picture of where I talked about the corridor. They've had divers inside that, um, in the, inside that hallway, swimming around with all that jagged metal and the like, trying to do the measurements up for the coffer dam. So they'll make an assessment today and then they'll start doing some of the planning on is that the best method or do they have to go and do you know, the, the hot tap which is going on the outside of it and going through the hull of the vessel. So it's about measuring things up, seeing what is the best um, option for that um, for the recovery out of three, uh, five star. The big advantage of the cofferdam approach is that if the ship starts becoming unstable it gives the capacity to close that um, start the tank back off and avoid that all going into uh, the ocean in the event that the ship becomes unstable.